Hello friends, I hope you're having a good day. Isn't it beautiful outside? It is just gorgeous out there. I love snow, and I think we, we probably all do. I still got a little kid in me about that. Uh, you know, when I, when I look at the snow, I think about what God has done in my life. He's given me a fresh new start and a new life, kind of like snow does. When it falls fresh, everything's all clean and white. And though, our, though our past be like scarlet, He can make us white as snow. And that's what Jesus wants to do in each one of our lives. Uh, this year, 2021, is the year of the family. Uh, that's something that we know is very important. We, we want, don't we want our families to make it? Don't we, want, don't we all want to be uh, in the kingdom forever, in heaven, with Jesus? Wouldn't that be wonderful that all of our family make it? Um, I think that, that uh, probably the most important thing that, that we should do as families is to encourage each other to, to give our life to Jesus. Because he is the only way that we're going to make it. There is no other way. There is no other way. Uh, Jesus has opened up a door that, that we can all go through, that, that we can be victorious, and that, that we can live a life uh, free, set free, and live a life that he wants us to live. So I think today's a really important message. So if you if you uh, if you got a family member, maybe be praying for them during this message, because we're going to be praying that God sets the captives free today. Join me in prayer. Father in heaven, um, nothing in our hands we bring, simply to the cross we cling. We're relying on you, Lord, and, and just teach us, Lord, teach us something today uh, that, that, uh, that we need to know that, that, will, that will make us stronger, that will make us more like you and less like ourselves. We pray for the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. World War II had been dragging on for nearly six years. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives. Cities, whole cities destroyed, whole communities absolutely just destroyed by the bombs that were falling just like rain. People were dying like flies everywhere. I mean, all kind of horrible stories. I mean, I only know because I've seen movies of it and things like that, like Hacksaw Ridge uh, with Desmond Doss and and uh, we know we know that the, the stories about uh, Normandy, uh, D-Day. I mean, you hear all these horrible stories that were going on. Finally, Germany surrendered, uh, but still, uh, Japan refused to surrender. They just would not surrender, even though thousands and thousands uh, of their own people had died in the war. Still, they refused to surrender. So in the beginning of 1945, Allied leaders declared that Japan must surrender or they would be destroyed. But still, they would not surrender because of their unwillingness, friends, to surrender. Uh, something happened that forever changed the world. The two, not just one, two atomic bombs were dropped on Japan, killing thousands. What a terrible, tragic event. And it didn't have to happen. I mean, that's the big thing. They had a choice. Only if they just heeded uh, the, the warnings. They, they were already defeated. They were defeated if they had just surrendered. You know, what a hard lesson to learn. Friends, as tragic and as terrible as that war was, there's a war raging right now that's far, far worse than World War II. Much worse because the, because the, because the, because of eternal consequences. It's 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 so much worse because because the effects are eternal and not just not just for a little while. You know, and as hopeless as it was for them to stay in the war, the Bible says it's even more hopeless for us if we just hang on to to this world. Now, I've got to tell you something today. I think that's going to have a huge impact on your families. Unless we give up, unless we give up on this world and turn loose of our sins, unless we surrender our life to Jesus, friends, we are all going to be destroyed. That's right, we are. So the most important thing that you can give your children is Jesus. The most important words of advice that you can give the ones that you love is to surrender their life to Jesus. There is no other way. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, in verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. But, but it doesn't have to be that way, friends. It doesn't have to be that way because the very rest of the verse says because the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So yes, the wages of sin is death, but it doesn't have to be that way because the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We do have a way of escape. We do have a choice. Just like Japan had a choice, you've got a choice. Your families have got a choice. And they need to choose Jesus, friends. He's the only way. So what I want to do today is I want to go to the Word of God. Go to the Word of God. And God's got a powerful message for us today. And uh, it's found in Romans chapter 6. Now we're going to spend a lot of time here today in Romans chapter 6. So go ahead and open up your Bible there. And uh, this will be a place that I hope you can mark in your Bible. Next time that, that you've got something that's got a grip on your life, you can open up to that scripture, Romans chapter 6, and God has got a message of freedom for you. Freedom. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Now listen to these words right here. Why shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Right? Can we just, should we just continue on? Is that part of God's plan that we just continue on and on uh, being a slave to our sin? Is that, is that part of God's plan? Listen to verse 2. God forbid. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And then in verse 3. Know you not that, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. I just love the picture here that the Bible's painting here. Baptism, it symbolizes death. Death to the old man. The old man, he's died here. He's, picture, just picture this in your mind. He's, he's put into the watery grave, and, he, and, he, and, he's, and he's raised up. He goes down into the watery grave, and then he's raised up to newness of life. How? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Jesus Christ that lives in me. Now think about this. Can you, can you picture trying to bury somebody that's not dead yet? No, they'd go down kicking and screaming, friends. And, and, uh, so, but that's not the picture that the Bible paints here. Verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead. How? By the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Friends, do, do you believe that God, uh, that God had enough power to resurrect Jesus Christ from the grave? Me too. I, amen. I do believe that. That's the very core of our fundamental belief. Well, friends, shame on us for encouraging people to have enough faith to believe that God can resurrect from the grave, that resurrect from the grave, uh, uh, but not encourage believers to believe that He has enough power to, to give us a new life, a totally new life, victory over, over sin in our life, total freedom from it, Free, freedom from that ball and chain. Friends, I want you to know something. Jesus not only died on that cross to pay the price for our sin, he died on the cross to give us power to overcome sin. The very life that Jesus lives right now, he can save to the uttermost. He can help you overcome that sin. You don't have to be a slave to it. it, you, don't have to, it you don't have to be a ball and chain to you. There is power, resurrection power in, in the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. And listen to verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So, now friends, think about this. Is it our calling to be a servant of Jesus Christ, or are we, are we called to be a servant of our sin? Do we just have to be a slave to our sin? I mean, is that, what did Jesus die for? Jesus died to save us from our sin, friends, to save us from our sins. Over 150 years ago, we had a terrible war that took place right here on U.S. soil. Terrible war. And uh, to, 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 to free the slaves, to set men free. But I'm here to tell you today, friends, 
that there's a much greater war than, than that war that was fought. And it was won. This war was won on a hill called Calvary, friends, to redeem us, to set the captives free, to open up the eyes of the blind, friends. You know, I know this to be true, so true, because I was a prisoner. I was a slave to, to my sins. I was so deceived. I was so blinded, friends. But I praise God because I have been redeemed, friends. I praise God because of Calvary, I'm free today. Free from, from drugs. Now, I don't know if you have a friend or relative that, that's addicted to drugs, but it's a terrible place to be, friends. It's just life-destroying. I was a slave to drugs, a slave to hard drugs like cocaine and crystal meth. These things are addicted, and they are destroying. Friends, I was, I was a slave to alcohol. I drank alcohol every single day. It had a grip on my life. I didn't think I could... I didn't really think I could enjoy life without alcohol. I thought I had to have it. And then, and then there's lust. I, my mind was so warped uh, uh, through lust. And, and it had a grip on my life. And it had a grip on my life probably since I was a teenager. Just had a hold on me. And, and, then, and then there was tobacco. And friends, I could keep going on and on and on. But I praise God because of Calvary that Jesus Christ set me free. And it wasn't me. It wasn't me mustering up this. No, it was Jesus Christ's victory. It was Him working in me. This freedom is yours. It is a God-given right because you are a child of God. You are part of the family of God. He loves you and He cares about you. And your kinsman, your next of kinsman, Jesus Christ, your blood redeemer, He died for you and He shed His blood. And he paid the price for your sins. And, and now he lives to give you victory over your sins. Do you believe that? Will you grab hold of that, friends, that Jesus Christ right now can set you free from your sins? Now, this is a gift. It's not something that you can earn, but it's something more achieved. It's, it's, not, it's not earned, it's achieved. It's something that you receive as you connect to Jesus. See, the, the key here is putting all your effort instead of trying to quit smoking or drinking or whatever it is, putting your, all your effort into seeking Jesus, to cleaving to Him, to abiding with Him, to grabbing a hold of Jesus and not letting go. I mean, I really had to get radical about it, to be honest. I had to put my thoughts on Him continuously. I had to fix my mind on Him. I took down Scripture promises, and I claimed these promises. Uh, from the Bible. I put in my name, I inserted my name in the Word of God and, and I claim this promise like Philippians 4.13 4.13 I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Rick, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I put my name in these scriptures. There is dynamite power in the Word of God in the claiming these scriptures right here. It's, it's amazing what God can do. One of my favorite scriptures is, is when, when John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Behold is something about beholding Jesus. It's something about beholding Him. Uh, just realizing that God loved me so much that He was willing to die for me. It's something about doing that that, that, that helps you realize that Jesus loves you and it does something to your heart, friends. It's got, it's got, it's got creative power. It's, it's, it's got dynamite power to do something to your heart, to do something that the, uh, that this uh, sin has a grip on your life. Uh, Jesus said it the best when he said in John twelve thirty two, he says, "If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me." He'll draw you away from that grip that the that the world has on your life. He'll draw you away from the grip that sin has on your life as you as you behold him up on the cross, dying for you. Spend some time doing that. I recommend spending time every single day. Yeah, that's radical, right? If you want a new life, you want to be set free, spend some time every single day just meditating on the life of Christ, especially as closing hours. So praise God. Friends, Paul's, Paul's telling us here, it, listen to this right here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace, friends, this is a guilt. It's a guilt. It's not something you earn, but it's something you achieve. It's not something you achieve, but it's something you receive as you connect with Jesus, as you cleave to Him. Uh, it's a gift you get from Him. For by grace you are saved through faith, 
and that it is a gift, friend. It's a gift from God. See, Paul's telling us right here that we don't, we don't have to be a slave. We don't have to be a, a, a servant to our sin no more. We don't have to be. Friends, just believe that. Hang on to it. I challenge you. I dare you to stand on the promises here that God gives us here. Listen to this next verse. Verse 11. Verse 11. You don't want to miss this one. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Likewise, reckon yourself. Now, uh, I, that, that to me means choose. Choose. Make a choice. Choose. Choose. Uh, reckon yourself to be dead to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. In other words, believe in this. Reckon it. Make a decision. Uh, believe. Have faith. Do you believe that God raised Jesus Christ up from the grave? Yes, He did. Do you believe that God has the power to resurrect your, your loved ones uh, from the dead? Yes, He does, friends. Then, then, but He has the same power to resurrect and give you a new life today. So reckon yourself to be dead to sin. Not a slave to sin, but dead to sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Victory. Friends, you have a choice today. Isn't this good news? You have a choice today. The Bible's telling you that you can be free. You can be victorious. So, that's what I did. I know this to be true. Now, verse 12. Verse 12. Let not... This whole chapter 6 is great. Let, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Don't let sin therefore reign. Don't let sin have dominion over you. Jesus didn't go through what he went through to, 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 to just leave us in our sin. He, he went through what he went through to save us from our sin, to give us power to overcome sin. Now, this, next, this is the key. This next verse, verse 13. Now, get this right here. Verse 13. Neither yield yourself, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness and sin. Now, this is a key point right here. Key point. You see, sin is a choice, friends. That's right. Really, it's a choice. The Bible tells us right here that we yield to unrighteousness to commit sin. It is something you decide you're going to do. Now, I think of David. David, a man after God's own heart. Think about this. When David, David and Bathsheba, remember? You know, David had come back earlier. His men were out there fighting and everything. And David walked out on his balcony. And there she was, Bathsheba. Uriah, one of his best friends, one of his mighty men, well, his wife was laying there, there bathing. Now, he had a choice right then. What should he have done? Now, this is a man after God's own heart. What he should have did, he should have turned around right then, shouldn't he? That's not what he did. He just, he gazed down there. He kept, he kept looking. The Bible says in verse 13, don't yield, don't yield yourself to unrighteous, but yield yourself unto God. Friends, you've got a choice. You can yield yourself to unrighteous, or you can yield yourself unto God. It's those that are alive, those that are alive from the dead, and your members is instruments of righteousness and God. Now, friends, don't miss this point right here. Temptation is a fork in the road. That's right. It's a fork in the road. When we come to it, We've got a choice to make. We can choose to yield to God, right? Or, or and be led down the road of righteousness. I friends, I want I want you to know. I remember the first time that I that, that God gave me victory over alcohol. And I had a choice. I had a choice about I made a choice that I was not going to drink anymore. Did I get tempted? Yes. But when I got that temptation, I made a choice. I yielded to God. I yielded to God, friends, and, 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 the, and there's power in yielding to God because as soon as you yield to Him, that grip is broken right then. Now, it's, it's broken right there. There, and, and if, you, if, you, if you turn away from the devil, he will flee. He will flee from you. That's what I did. I, I said, no, I've yielded to God. And friends, every time after that, it got easier and easier and easier to yield to God. I promise you, it works that way. See, we can choose to yield to God to be led down the road to righteousness or we can yield to the temptation. We can yield to self. That same old road we've been yielding to and yielding to, friends. Friends, I challenge you. 
Yield to God. When you get that temptation hit you, yield to God and, and do that. You know, as soon as soon as temptation pops in your head, don't dilly dab around with it. Don't play around with it. As soon as that temptation hits in your head, right then you give it to Jesus. Right then you yield to God. Think how the story would have been so different if, if David, when he looked down, when he looked down at Bathsheba, as he, if he had yielded to God right then, as he turned around, it had been so much different. But friends, we know what happened. After, after he yielded instead to the temptation and it kept going on, what did it lead to? It was a slippery slope. I promise you that David didn't wake up that day, stretch and say, oh, I think I'll kill Uriah, one of my best friends. No, no, he didn't. That's what sin can do. Sin is dangerous, friends. It's luring for one thing, very luring. And see, sin comes from the enemy. He tempts you into sin because he wants you to be separated from God. And he, and he does it. It's so dangerous, very dangerous. Now I want you to think about something here. Think about this here. If you're driving down the road, you're driving down the road, and you and you come up to a yield sign. What do you do? What do you do? I mean, no matter how big a hurry you're in, what do you do? You're, 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 you, well, I'll tell you what you don't do. You, you don't go, out of my way, I'm coming through anyway. No, that's not what you do. No matter how big a hurry you're in, no matter how late you're running, you, you, you stop and you yield. That's what you do. That is exactly what you do. The Bible says that we are to yield to Jesus. When, we, when we're driving down uh, life's road, when we're traveling down life's highway, and we come face to face with a big temptation, we are to yield to Jesus. Exactly. Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. This is so important here, friends. Verse 16 says, Know you not, know you not, that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. Sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. So clear. Friends, the Japanese would not yield. They just wouldn't do it. They would not raise the white flag. They wouldn't do it. They were defeated already. They were. Dead on their feet. Friends, Christians today are the very same way. Deceived. Hanging on to their pet sins. Total slaves to them. They, they told themselves so long that it's okay. They, they told themselves so long that they rationalized it and they just believe it's something that they've got to live with forever. When God wants to give them victory, victory over that besetting sins, they're just hanging on to their, to their lust and their, their desires. Even though, friends, even though the Word of God is so clear right here in Romans chapter 6 and throughout the Bible here, even though the Word of God says yield, but they won't let go. They won't trust God. Friends, don't let that be you anymore. Yield to, yield to God, and He will give you victory. Just like, the best way I can put it, you know these promises that God gives us in the Bible here, they are powerful. They're not meant to just be memorized. They're meant to be internalized. There's power in these words here. You know, the Bible says that, that by, be, by through these words here, and these precious promises here, that we can be partakers of the divine nature. You are a child of God. The child of the King is, is who you are. When we see God's will, when we see God's will, it is our job, our job to yield, friends. Yield to Him. Now, this is not a works-based salvation, friends. This is faith. This is relationship. See, you will never be able to overcome anything on your own. The only way that you're ever going to be victorious is through the righteousness and through the power of Jesus Christ. It's His victory. But when we, when we come to Him, when we cling to Him, it gives Him permission to work in your life and work out that victorious life that, that He wants you to have. Now, is this easy? Well, apparently not because you're wrestling against flesh is what you're doing. But friends, every time you yield to God, it's going to be that much easier to yield to Him again. But likewise, every time you yield to that temptation, it's going to get easier and easier and easier to yield to that temptation. Now, I want to give you an example in the Bible uh, that I think is probably one of the best examples there is. Jesus is our example. Uh, open up your Bible to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. And we find when we get here, Jesus 
is, is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, he's in his very final hours, right before the cross of Calvary here. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 39. It says, as he went to the Mount of Olives, his disciples followed him. They, they, they followed him. Jesus knew. Now think about this, friends. Jesus knew that he had a date with the cross. It was dead ahead. It was right in front of him. You know, friends, we have really, we really don't. We have no idea how ugly the cross was, how awful it was. You know, I, I, I've only read about it, and probably you too. I mean, you know, we've never experienced any, anything like that. But I want you to know, friends, it was horrible. It was, it was terrible is what it was. And Jesus knew that it was coming. He knew that, and, and, but he made a choice. He, see, he could have got out of it any moment, but he didn't come to this earth. He did not come to this earth to save himself. He came to save me and you. And he came to save us from our sins. And there was no other way, friends. No other way. In verse 40, he said to, his, uh, to the disciples here, he says, pray that you enter not into temptation. Pray. And he withdrew from them about a stone cast, and he kneeled down and prayed. Now what do you think, what do you think was going through his mind here, friends? Did, 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 he, did, did he die for us willingly? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Was, it, was, it, was, it, was he looking forward to going through it? No way. No way. He, his human was no. You know, he knew that it was going to be awful. He knew that it was going to be brutal. He, he knew that it was going to be unbearable. He knew what he was about to go through. So Jesus did the same thing that any one of us would have did when we're crying out to God for help. He said, he said so he prayed to his father. He says, you know, I, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go through this. I want to avoid this. If there's any way possible to get me out of this, Lord, do it. That, basically, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said. Verse 42, he says, Father, if, if, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, what do you do here? What do you do right here, friends? Yo, Lord, I don't want to go through this. If this cup could pass from me, if there's any other way, but, but, but then what does he do? He yields. He says, not my will, but may your will be done. Now, now what happened is Jesus came to the fork in the road facing Calvary. And, and it, it, it made him sweat great drops of blood just thinking about it. I mean, but he yielded. Friends, he yielded to his Father. Not my will, but your will be done. Friends, are you at a crossroad today? Have you come across? Are you there today? I don't believe it's an accident that God has you today watching. I don't believe it's an accident at all. I believe there's someone out there right now that's been struggling with sin for a long time. And, and, and you might be, you, you might have children. You might even have grandchildren that you want to be a role model to. You want, to, you want them to make it to, to heaven. You want, them, you want them to know that there's a God that can help them through whatever they're going through. So, so you're tired of it. You, you, want, you want victory over the, whatever this, this sin is. You know it's God's will. You know that it is, and and uh, and you know that you need to be set free from it. Maybe it's a huge struggle. Maybe it's had a grip on your life a long time. Friends, today's your day. You're at the crossroad. Yield to Jesus. Yield to Jesus. No matter how much your flesh wants it, yield to Jesus. Say, Lord, I'm going to stand on your promises. Pick you out a promise in the Bible that you can stand on. You stand on that promise, friends. There's power in that promise. Just like the, the oak tree is in the acorn, right? There is power in the very Word of God. Power in the promise to, to fulfill whatever the promise is. To stand on your promise right here and you yield to God and say, Not my will, but may your will be done. Not my will, Lord. Not my will today. Not my will today, Lord, but let your will be done. And as you yield to God, as you resist the devil, friends, he will flee. He will free, flee, friends. I know there's probably somebody out there right now that's struggling with maybe unforgiveness. Maybe it's had a grip on you for a long time. 
You know, you've been struggling with it for years. It's hurting you. It's hurting your family. It's stealing your joy. Yield to Jesus, friends. Tell Him right now, I'm yielding to you, Jesus. I'm yielding to you. I know this is not your will because you tell us that we need to forgive others. We need to do that. Yield to Jesus. Yield to Him right now, friends. Not, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Maybe there's somebody out there that, that, that's, uh, that's just lose, about to lose their temper again. Again, yield to Jesus. Yield to Him right now. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. God wants to give you victory. There's power in the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Hebrews 7.25 that He can save to the uttermost. Yes, He died for your sins, friends, but He wants to give you power to overcome your sins right now on this earth because it brings glory to God. And as your children and as your family see you standing up for Jesus and see this change in you, they know that, oh, you, but when they see this change in you, that's what's going to draw them closer to Jesus too. Friends, we all want to make it. I want you to make it. I want your families to make it. But nobody wants your families to make it more than Jesus. God didn't go through what he went through, friends, to, to save us in our sin. He died to save us from our sin. So, whatever it is, friends, whatever temptation it is, let it be your prayer. Let it be your prayer right now. Lord, no matter how much I want this, if it's not your will, then let it be, not my will, but may your will be done. Friends, I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, there's a lot of people out there listening right now that needed to hear this message. Whatever it is that, that's, been, that's, that's been a stumbling, stumbling block, that's had a hold on their life, friends, dear God, I know that you want to give them victory right now. So I plead the blood of Jesus on their life, and I pray that all heaven would be released to give them victory over whatever it is, whatever that besetting sin is. Lord, set them free. Set the captives free, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you, friends. Know that Jesus loves you and he cares about you. And he's coming back soon. He's coming back soon to get you and your family. We all want to be there. God bless you.